Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be evolving our CLI. Uh, we're going to be specifically creating a, config, a user configuration file where uh, the user can define certain aspects of the CLI. For instance, uh, the user can say, I would like to do automatic, uh, automatic uh, updates or not. Or the user can say, I'm using uh github ssh or uh, git ssh or i'm using git https so that's the sort of thing that it, we we i would like to do is to give the user some options of how to use the the cli right? so if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos and i'm also going to be posting the links for the previous ones so you can keep it up right so without further ado. So this is what we have, this is our uh, CLI. So the first thing that we want to do, so let me remove this. So the first thing that I would like to do is we need to add the config, the actual config file, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a template. I'm going to create a folder called uh, resources. And in this folder, I'm going to create a file called user config template. This is a template because um, this is a template because I want uh, the user to, to use this sort of uh, uh, to, to as a configuration file and not uh, and not a file for the, the user already, right? So this is just a template for whenever you're setting up the, the CLI, you use these two for your setup. So this is going to be, this is a bash file. So it's going, I'm going to use the hash bang here. So it's e, e, usr bin env bash, right? And now I'm going to say, I want to export a variable called git SSH protocol. And I'm going to say that this variable is true. All right, cool. So by saying this variable is true, it's, you are, you, you're going to be using SSH, right? If you say false, you're going to be using HTTPS. So I'm going to give the options here, like is it the true or false? All right. So another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a another variable called enable automatic update. And I'm going to say it's true. I'm going to comment out because we won't be using this right now. And then I'm going to say uncomment the below, the below line if you want to enable automatic update great this is going to be uh, uh for the next for for our follow-up video all right so now how can i use this file right so we, we already have the setup here i'm going to create uh another option called user and i'm going to say create the user configuration file all right, and then I can now define a couple of things that I want to do on my environment variable, right? So the first thing that I'm going to define is where this file is located. So I'm going to come here to environment where I can have a bunch of variables for the whole uh, CLI, and I'm going to create a variable called resources dir, right? And this is where our resources are. So I'm going to say that this is in the root D. We already have this variable, root D, slash resources, right? I'm also going to create, uh, I'm going to leave that for, 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 for the field, for this soon future. But what I'm going to here, and I'm going to create now, I'm going to create a, a value for this config template. I'm going to create this in the setup, uh, in the setup file, and not in the environment. Because this one, 
these are variables that can be used in anywhere in, 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 in the framework, in the CLI, right? This one is specific for the config template one. This is only going to be used here. So I don't need to create a variable that's going to get, that can be accessed by any place. So I'm going to create a variable called, I don't need to export it, uh, user config file template. Right, and now we can use the resources resources dir and the name of the file, which is user config user config template. All right, so now I already have a variable that I can use, and now let's use it. So I'm going to create the actual code to make this awesome functionality to happen. And what I'm going to say here is I'm going to already tell the user uh, one thing, right? I'm going to say uh, to the user, uh, creating the user config file in, and I'm going to define where, where we are be creating this file, right? So we're going to be creating this file inside the config folder because this is a configuration folder already. So when we have a variable for that in the framework itself called configuration dir. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say export user config file. And I'm going to say that this is in the configuration dir slash user config. That's the name of the file that we will be uh, using. And this one is here because we can use the user configuration file in any place, wherever we, wherever we want, right, in the code. So that's why this is a cross, this is a, a export variable. This is because this can be used anywhere. All right. So this is going to be called user conf, uh, configuration. So creating the user configuration file in configuration D. So this is going to, to be, uh, or even better, right? You can say creating file, creating user configuration file. Uh, this is good enough. Cool. So now what I'm going to do, I need to copy this content to the configuration dir, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the if command because the if command executes a, uh, it's going to check if the command was successful or not. So I'm going to say if cp for copy, uh, dash I for, uh, it's going to, it's going to be an interactive session, a interactive copy. That means that if, uh, there is another file already there of the same name, it's going to let the user know and the user can decide what the user wants to do. So what I'm going to say is I want to copy this file to here, right? I need to do it then and then close it. And what I want to do if the file, if the copy was successful, I'm going to do in green and I'm going to say file, use a config file, create it. And then I'm going to break a line. I'm going to say, follow the files instructions. And I'm going to let the user know that the user needs to follow the files instructions. Cool. All right. Now I can try this out. So we can do is uh, bb setup user and 
the file was copied, uh, the break line did not work. Oh, I didn't put a break line here. So let me break this thing. And now I can test it. Another thing that I will be going to test anyway, I'm going to execute the command again. The file was created, but then the CP is going to say, the file is already there. Do you want to override it? And then I can choose, let me override it. And then I have a nice message saying, file was created, follow the file's instructions. If you go to the code, you're going to see that the file is here and the user can now decide whatever the, 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 the configuration that the user is going to do. And the user needs to follow these instructions. Cool. So there is still one thing that we need to do is we created the file, but this file is not going to be used, right? We are exporting variables here. How can we check? How can we make sure that these variables are being used? So we need to source this content. We need to tell the CLI, we need to read this content. And how we read it is using the source command. So here in our environment, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say loads user specific configuration. All right. And then I'm going to say if the file exists, dash E is if the file uh, exists, and I'm going to pass the file, user config file. Then I wanted to source the file. So basically this is, if this file exists, then execute this command, which is sourcing the file itself. All right. So if the file does not exist, it's not going to source it. So we can check this uh, real quickly. Like I can come here and I can do setup check and I can create a, let me check and I'm going to do an echo git setup, git ssh protocol. All right. So now if I do a setup check, it's true. This is specific for the SSH protocol. So it was, it was the, the, this content was already read, right? So if I don't have this file here and I delete it and I try to set up check, it's not going to give an error because it did not try to source it, right? If we did not had these specific instructions here, then you try to source the, the CLI is trying to source something that does not exist, right? So that's why this command is important. So let's set up. There's one thing that we need, still need to do, which is we need to remove the user config from the from 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 being version being version because we I don't want to version every single uh, user config, right? Um, so I'm going to add to the git ignore. Basically, I'm going to just say uh, conf slash user config. And here is ignore user specific config file. And now it's gone. I don't need to version that anymore. So that's it. You can see that the very powerful thing that we can do with this uh, and still going to see a lot more. Right. So thank you for watching this far. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. And if you like it, give the thumbs up. It's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I see you next video.